So good morning. Um, today's lesson, SAS3 area models, the bell ringer. Let's look at this. There are three cubes in each of three paper bags, a red cube, a white cube, and a blue cube. Four groups of students will draw one cube from each bag. Draw a tree diagram that shows the sample space of the situation. All right. So let's look into it carefully. Um, possibilities. You pull a red cube, and then you can pull a red cube, uh, and then you can pull a red cube. And if you look at all the possibilities out of the three bags, there's three bags, one, two, and three. And we can see that in the first bag, we're going to get one choice. Uh, then we're going to get another choice, and then another choice. Um, is this the only situation? No, because we've got the possibilities of pulling a white cube out of the first bag. And we also have the possibility of pulling a blue cube out of the first bag. And all of the three cubes you pull out of the first bag have their own set that is exactly the same. So total possibilities, uh, three times nine, which is 27. All right, good things. This is last year, but I like to share it. I know some people are in a marching band. Um, I was heavy in a marching band all four years in high school, um, competed in Indiana's state fair marching band competition, uh, competed in their uh, marching e exhibition and marching uh, competitions all through high school. Um, while I was there, we never made it past the the division one round. Uh, we always get a division two. We did really well my senior year, uh, came in first place in our section, but nobody in our section um, of schools went on to state. So but this was a good thing. Not only did they make it to state, they won state um, last year. Um, the new band director is uh, really good, and she's all about uh, taking care of uh, the band kids. Um, she's had a lot of alumni come back and play with them for uh, basketball games and football games. It's been a lot of fun. Kind of wish I lived a little closer, but, you know, being in Texas, kind of hard to go up to Indiana and uh, just play for a basketball game. Uh, one night for a couple hours. So anyway, um, recall the rules for the pumpkin problem in SAS2 for tree diagrams. Um, customers walk forward through the maze, winning a pumpkin as the goal. But it all depended on if a pumpkin is at the exit. What if we drew an area model that demonstrates the probability of a getting a pumpkin using this maze? Now, our area model is simply that. It's a square or a rectangular section that shows uh, portions of each one, uh, the results of your end of your path. So let's look at it. Oh, let me back up. What are the possibilities customers enter the maze? They can take the upper, middle, or lower path. And these are the three options that lead to one, um, to divide an area model into three sections. So the three, three options are going to make us separate our area model into three sections. The upper, section, the middle section, and the lower section. They represent the upper, lower, and middle path. All right, let's look at each path and decide how to divide each section. The upper path divides into two paths, so we separate it into no pumpkins or pumpkins. Middle path stays one path, and, low, and it's just pumpkins. And lower path also separates into pumpkins and no pumpkins. So what is the probability of this? So we're going to get two-thirds of the probability – not getting a pumpkin in one third to get a pumpkin or is it the other way around probably getting a pumpkin is two thirds the probability of not getting one is one third um if we were to see this pumpkin section in the middle notice it's actually the same size as both of these or both of these so it's two of one of, of these two okay this one is the same as these two so it's Two pumpkins here, one pumpkin here, and one pumpkin here. That's four out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So four sixths is two thirds. So probably to get a pumpkin is two thirds. No pumpkin is two sixths or one third. All right. How does the area model compare to the tree diagram in the last section? Is the end result of the pumpkin, no pumpkin, the same? Yes, we just discussed it. It is the same. Now look at the drawing of the second maze the church decided to construct. A little convoluted, isn't it? Use an area model to determine the theoretical probability of a customer taking home a pumpkin. So, 
there's four pathways coming off the entrance and I've separated them into different pathways. It's kind of hard to see, but if you take the upper pathway, it splits once. Notice you can't go backwards. Okay. Splits once. Let's take that upper pathway and it splits twice. Okay. So this one splits twice, splits once here, and then it splits tw once here. And this one does not split again. So it's set up where we are separated exactly the way it's set up. We have uh, one fourth times one half. And this top one right here times one half to go to no pumpkins. So one fourth times one fourth times one half. But look at how it's set up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight options on this top, upper row. And are there, let's see, here's one, here's two, here's three, and four, and then here's five. Well, I wonder why it says there's only, there's eight. Well, look at the selections here. One, two, three, four, five. There are only five, but there's a bigger, bigger sections in some than there are in others. So for instance, this top one, we go split twice, split once, split twice. So it's one half times one half. That's one fourth for no pumpkins. That's this section right here. And this section right here is also one half and one half. That's this section right here. Get pumpkins. Now how about this one? One half, and then one half, and then one half. So that's this section right here. That's one eighth. And this section right here is pumpkins, and that's one eighth. And then one half and one half, we had pumpkins. That's this section. And we do this for all four of them. It's really convoluted, but it's not as complicated as it looks. Just remember to go through the whole thing. We can do this with a tree diagram to help us understand it. But as you can see, an area model gives you a better insight as to what what your probability is so we can separate this and you look at it carefully sample size of this area model what is the probability of getting a pumpkin sample size if we make it into the smallest sections right here these are two of each so this is one two three four five six seven eight times four is 32 sample size is 32 and to find the probability of getting a pumpkin just add all the y's and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 out of 32. Okay, what is theoretical probability is defined as a method to express the likelihood that something will occur. It is calculated by dividing the number of favorable outcomes by the total possible outcomes. That's what we've been doing the last couple of days with probability. Um, this area model is the same as this area model. What we've done is we've taken these sections that are bigger than these smaller sections and separated them into the size of this one. So notice these two ends are the same as this end. It's the same area. These two Ys are the same as this Y right here. We've done that for the whole thing, and we can easily determine the probability. There's eight and four. There's a total of 32. And the probability for pumpkin. We had the Y's, and it's 23 out of 32. Um, no pumpkin is 23 from 32, or 9, 9 out of 32. So if 50 customers enter the maze, how many pumpkins do you expect to give away? And explain your reasoning. Well, if you have 50 customers come in, and we know the probability of getting a pumpkin, we simply multiply the number of customers by the probability fraction. So if, no, if pumpkin, 23 out of 32, or 72%, What's 72% of 50? 36 pumpkins will be given away. We should expect to give away 36 pumpkins. All right, the maze has six exits. If you want to give away a lot of pumpkins, then what three exits do you put the pumpkins? Explain your reasoning. Hint, the number of exits one through six have the area model shown where the path ends. Wow. Look at that lower one. <laughs> Pretty simple. Determine the possibility or the probabilities of ending up on a given path. Further divide the area into equal size parts and count the number of times where the path ends. Hmm. So P of 1, 7 of 32. P of 2, 7 of 32. P of 3, 7 of 32. P of 
four, one of 32, P of five, eight of 32, and P of six, two of 32. So five has more opportunities, okay? Five has more opportunities to actually get pumpkins. Um, there are eight ways to get there. So eight out of 32. Now, if you do not want to give away too many pumpkins, at which three exits do you place the pumpkins and explain your reasoning? Okay, using the answers from the last question, we can determine which exit to place the pumpkins at. Um, which one has the least? Well, hello. Exit four and six, which are one and two, or three, are the best candidates. One or two, we add them together, it's three. Allowing only 10 of 32 customers to leave with a pumpkin. Because this year's maze was such a success, plans for next year's maze are made into an area model. Draw a maze that fits his plan. Um, we can give all kinds of examples. It doesn't really matter. There's one. Okay. Here's another example. And then there's another example. So you can look at this, stop and study, and see how that works. Um, there are several ways to look at it. Just understand that as long as this fits that, it doesn't matter what it looks like. All right. So by dividing the area model into equal size parts based on the original area model, and you count the Ys, you can find P of Y. P of Y is 19 of 36, or 52.8%. All right? P of N is 17 of 36, or 47.2%. All right, you can use an area model to analyze probability situations that involve more than one stage. For example... Um, this example involves selecting a marble, yellow, red, or blue, from one jar, and a cube, yellow, red, or green, from another jar. So look at this area model. It's a three by three. Um, let me go back. Yeah, two red marbles, one blue and one yellow, and then one red, one yellow, one green cube. Notice that the marbles are listed here, red, red, blue, yellow, and the squares or cubes are red, yellow, green. They're shown right here. So we're going to look at it as RR. These are the outcomes. Two red, two red, a blue and a red, a yellow and a red. That's yellow uh, ball. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, yellow marble and a red cube and a red marble and yellow cube. Um, so you can see all the probabilities here. Jar one, we have two reds. And one blue and one yellow. So we have one quarter of the time we'll pick up yellow. One quarter of the time we'll pick up a blue. And half of the time, or two-fourths, we'll pick up red. Now the jar two is marbles. They're all one-third. They're all equally. This looks the same for all three. The difference is what you multiply. If you get a yellow and then uh, another yellow or a green, doesn't matter, or a red, you've got one-fourth times one-third. That's one-twelfth, um, and so on. But if you go red, you get red, red, it's two-fourths times one-third, or two-twelfths. So let's look at that. Find P of RY. There are two of them out of the total 12. Two out of 12 is one-six, or 16.6%. Uh, find P of at least one red. Um, I don't think it says red marble or red cube, so we just count all the reds. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Should be half of them. Um, let's see, one red plus two reds. Oh, I see it. Hmm. We're just looking, oh, at least one red marble. I get it. No, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There it is down there. So eight of 12 or two thirds, 66.7%. So we just look at any of them that have an R, whether it's a marble or a cube, it doesn't matter. Well, how about find P both being the same color? Well, there's one, two, three. Notice there's no green marbles. So all we got is the green represented by the, um, the cubes. So that is... Um, both same color, one, two, three. Should be three out of 12. Uh, yep, two plus one plus zero plus zero is three out of 12 or one quarter. Very good, 25%. All 
All right, I'm going to launch you with this. The area model below represents the value of 375. Have a little fun with this one. Anyway, be blessed. Be a blessing. Be sure to check the Google Classroom and do the assignment that's in there for SAS3 area models.